Hey guys, how's it going? It's Moby from Moby Motion, and today I'm at the YouTube Space London. Now they have this edit suite that you can use to edit your high resolution 4K videos. The computers they have in this room are top spec Mac Pros, and they happen to also be very good at rendering Blender animations. So, since I'm the only person in here, I thought why not combine these all together to make a 120 thread render farm? That's right. Each of these computers has a 12 core Xeon processor that hyperthreads to 24 threads. There are four of these computers in here, another computer in there. No one's using a single one, so I'm going to combine them all together and show you exactly how to do that. Now, it doesn't matter if you have five Mac Pros or just two different laptops that you can combine together. The more computers that you can add to your render farm, the more you'll speed up your rendering. Even better, this is really easy to do and it's completely free, so let's jump into it. All you have to do is open up Blender and now open up the file that you'd like to render on your render farm. So this is a clip from my last tutorial on the molecular script and I'm going to render it using all these computers. Make sure there are no problems with your scene because once you've started rendering it's going to be quite difficult to change anything about this scene because you'll have to then make all these changes on all computers you're using. So I'm just making sure it's baked and everything is okay. Now the most important part of this tutorial is this output location. And that's what's gonna make our computers work together. So the first thing we'll need to do is find a folder which multiple computers can access. Now there are two ways to do that. If you have a shared network, you can create a folder on that. And as long as all your computers can access it, you can direct them all to the same folder. But not everyone has a shared network. And if you don't, it's still really easy. All you need is something like Dropbox or Google Drive and create a shared folder in there that all your computers can access. And that's what we'll use. Before we mess around with the render settings, the first thing we'll do is save this file into the shared folder. And I'll do that now. Luckily, here at the YouTube space, I can use a network. But the process for doing this on Google Drive is exactly the same. You just save the file into a shared folder. Now you set the output and the output has to be in the shared folder as well. And it has to be a relative path. So you can do two forward slashes to tell it to output in the same folder and then give it the name of a folder that you want to create inside the main shared folder and then have a backward slash and then press enter and now when you render, it's going to create a folder inside your shared folder called render or whatever you put in here and it's going to render in there and that's important. Now let's play with the settings. You have to make sure that overwrite is off and you have to make sure that placeholders is on. And for this to make sense, let's talk a little bit about how Blender usually saves projects. So by default, if you open up a Blender animation and hit render animation, overwrite is on and placeholders is off. So what Blender will do is go through every tile of your first frame, render every tile to however many samples you want. It might take a long time. And then it'll output frame one as a file and it'll save it over anything else that was called frame one before. So the problem here is if you have all five computers rendering at once, you don't want them to all try and render frame one. You want one to render frame one, one to render frame two, three, four, and five. So when you untick overwrite, it means that Blender is going to look for a file in that folder, and if it sees frame one, it's not going to render it, and it'll move on. And if it sees a frame two, it's going to skip again. And it's going to keep skipping until it sees a frame that hasn't been rendered. And what placeholders does is it makes sure that Blender creates a file before it's finished rendering. So basically, what this placeholder file does is it says to the other computers, don't worry, I've got this. I'm rendering this frame. No need to render it. So when you hit render now on your first computer, it's going to look for frame one. That isn't going to be one. So it's going to create a placeholder and start rendering frame one while the placeholder is there. On the second computer, it's going to look for frame one. It's going to see a placeholder. So it'll know not to render it and it'll move to frame two. And then that'll happen for every computer and they'll keep going up until frame 1000 until every frame has been rendered. Now the last thing you need to do before rendering this on all your computers is just save your file again in the same location it was in before because you want all of your computers to get these new render settings. 
now you're ready to go. Just hit animation and it'll start rendering here. Now just go to every computer, open the same file with the same version of Blender and hit render animation on every one. You can see it started rendering from frame 3, so it hasn't wasted time rendering frame 1 or 2, which the other computer has already finished. Now all you have to do is go through to all your other computers and do the exact same process. Now you can also use this technique to render on your GPU and CPU at the same time. And you can even have multiple CPUs and multiple GPUs. So here, each of these Mac Pros has dual graphics cards. So I could have actually had 10 GPUs and the 120 threads all rendering at once. But there are two reasons I didn't do that. Firstly, GPU renders might look slightly different to CPU renders, and you'll have to check this depending on your scene. If there is a problem, then you might get a weird flickering effect where some frames are rendered on the CPU, some are rendered on the GPU, and the frames will flick back and forth and you'll be able to tell that something is not right. The other reason I haven't done GPU and CPU rendering in this case is because these are AMD graphics cards, so I'm not sure if this scene will be completely supported. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this because it's quite interesting and you might find it useful. What you'll have to do is open up two instances of Blender. Now that's really easy on Windows. You can drag up on your Blender icon if it's in your taskbar and then click on Blender again. So even if a window is open, it'll open a second window. On Mac, it's a little bit trickier. So all you have to do is open up Terminal and type open space minus N and then the directory path to your Blender installation. And it's quite easy to find this. All you have to do is find your Blender installation path, right click and then hold Alt and you'll see this new option pop up, which is Copy Blender as Path Name. Now you can get rid of this window. Now with your path copied, head back to the terminal and type Open minus N and paste your path. Now you'll just have to go through and before every space, add a backward slash like this. Because the terminal doesn't like spaces and it won't be able to find your application if you don't have these backslashes. Even if you have this space after a folder name, don't get rid of it. Add a backslash in front of it because that's part of the folder name. Now hit enter and you'll notice a second version of Blender pops up. Open up the same clip that you want to render. You can now have these windows side by side so you can clearly see what's happening on both. Now choose a window to render on GPU and go to user preferences under system and select compute device to whatever you want to render on. And select the GPUs you want to render on. And now make sure device is GPU compute. Now you can just hit render here and render on the other window and it'll render both at the same time. You can see there's different frames being rendered by the GPU and the CPU. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, why not subscribe to get weekly videos just like this one. Anyway, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time.